Savage CBD strives to help people by offering top quality, lab tested, natural CBD at affordable pricing. And it really is affordable. Whether you're new to CBD or have been using it for years, you can always count on all natural, hemp derived CBD with the purest ingredients. Savage CBD carefully tests each batch to ensure quality, consistency, taste, and authenticity. They pride themselves on their transparency and believe that you should know exactly what goes into your favorite CBD products. With Savage CBD, you can choose from a range of premium CBD lotions, creams, tinctures, gummies, and so much more. When you look at their website, there are thousands of happy customers who've reported incredible results after using CBD to supplement their daily routine. Overall, Savage CBD's goal is to create the products that empower you to maintain your balanced lifestyle. Whether you need some extra shut-eye at night or you need to find some more calm throughout your day, you can count on Savage CBD to help you reach that goal. And guys, just for listening to this podcast, you can save 20% on your first purchase of CBD when you use our code BRAD20. So go ahead, my friends, start your CBD journey with Savage, and they'll be there to support you with every step of the way. Simply visit SavageCBD.com to redeem 20% off your first purchase of CBD by using code BRAD20 and see why thousands of people are using CBD. Now, Kelly, I've been a CBD user for a little while. I use it when I'm out on the disc golf course. It helps me relax. It's great with muscle aches and pains, and it's really kind of replaced ibuprofen for me. So uh, anybody that's listening to this, guys, check out Savage CBD. We thank them for being a supporter of the Noel Family Foundation, the Bradley's House podcast, and we hope you'll support them as well. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Paul from Slightly Stupid. It's great to be here. Psyched to talk about Reggae Rise Up Las Vegas. And you're listening to Bradley's House Podcast. Nothing is impossible. But certain things are highly improbable. Don't think I'll meet your kind again. Not in this lifetime. Hey guys, welcome back. Come on in and make yourself at home as you should when you're a guest in Bradley's house. I am your co-host, Jared Orr. She is the executive director of the Knoll Family Foundation and our host, Ms. Kelly Knoll. Kelly, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm so excited. We had such a phenomenal weekend at Reggae Rise Up and I'm so excited to share that with everybody. Oh my God, Las Vegas. I miss it. I've just been... I've been walking around singing Viva Las Vegas for the last (laughs) few days. Um, Now, you know, you got to leave Las Vegas and you drove back to Southern California. Uh, I went to Buffalo, New York. (laughs) Anna went to Saskatoon. Uh, I've got my heat on right now. I turned my heat on today. Do you now? Because I turned my air conditioning on today. Sorry about that. Shit's about to start getting real uh, in in Buffalo, um, but we will uh, we're going to talk all about uh, Reggae Rise Up in Las Vegas and all the great people that we've met. And when we said we were going to talk a little bit about it, Kelly, it only made sense um, for us to speak to some of the people that um, everybody was there to see. So. Yes. Um, we have a, uh, an amazing, uh, guest that's going to come on and chat a little bit. Uh, they headlined Saturday night at Reggae Rise Up, uh, a band that's used to being out there and touring, haven't been able to do it as much because of the time. So, uh, you could tell they really enjoyed themselves and the crowd really enjoyed themselves. Nuts. Um, it was amazing. Um, so joining us right now to talk a little bit with us is slightly stupid keyboard player, Paul Wilsoncraft. Paul. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, Las Vegas, um, like I said, I know that you guys, Slightly Stupid is known for being a band that's out. You guys are some working motherfuckers, right? <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys, you guys have been on, right? you know, right. you guys been on the road for years and COVID kind of shut that down now. I know you guys did Red Rocks. Uh, you did Petco Park um, yeah. and Vegas, uh, Reggae Rise Up. How cool was it to be back in that festival atmosphere? Ah, uh, it was just like being back in the saddle. It was awesome. I mean, and that's one of the big 
festivals that we do, the reggae rise ups, they're just, it's all our buddies. We love everyone there. We love all the music. It's, it's really a great day for us when we're there. Did it feel different this time after having been away from festivals for a while? Did the crowd feel different, more excited? I think that, you know, I, I would say, yeah. I mean, on our end, we're completely more excited because <laughs> you're not, you know, not touring in two years. Oh, uh, every date you do is kind of special. And sure. we've been super lucky on our ends that the gigs, we, even though we don't have any gigs, the gigs we do have, have all been like phenomenal. I've loved them all. And Reggae Rise Up was one of them also, you know. Awesome. As you guys are preparing for Reggae Rise Up, obviously it, it was a packed, it was a packed lineup both days. Yeah. Um, and Saturday was day one. Now, the first thing that I got to tell you guys, all right, is um, you, you got the job done, okay? Because on Saturday, the crowd busted in there the second those <laughs> gates opened. It was like they opened the floodgates, right? Sunday, yeah. I don't think anybody got there until like three o'clock. Um, you know, I'm not surprised with Vegas. You know, it's a crazy, it's a crazy ride. Just even going out there for a weekend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys set the tone Saturday night. Sunday morning, <laughs> the crowd was dragging ass, boy. Um, you could tell yeah. it was a it was a stupid night. Now, as you guys are going on, you're headlining, and I know, like you said, they're all your friends, right? But it's it's still it's the music business, right? And you know that everybody put a show on. As yeah. you guys are getting as you guys are getting prepared, who decides what the set list is going to be? Who decides what you guys are going to play? Well, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to Miles and Kyle will will be the ultimate set list because they're the ones who are singing the songs and, uh, you know, they're the ones leading the show. We all get some sort of say during the rehearsals and we work it out there. But come date, come the game time, you know, at the show, you never really know what the set is really going to be. Even though you rehearsed something, you may not be playing it there. <laughs> um, so I would say I would say Miles and Kyle make the set list pretty much every gig before the gig happens now i'll tell you a story i was uh i was back <laughs> uh, i was backstage with miles right before you guys went on and uh -huh. um not not because i'm cool but because i was with jaime <laughs> and when you're with jaime you can go <laughs> wherever you want right so um i i was i was kind of jaime's plus one and uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there was actually a guy back there who looked at Miles and goes, uh, "Hey man, where are you from?" And uh, Miles, says, <laughs> right? Miles says, uh, "San Diego." And the guy goes, "Oh, right on, man. Uh, what do you what do you do?" <laughs> and Miles says, um, "I I sing I sing songs." <laughs> the guy goes, "Oh, really, man? What do you what do you sing?" Miles goes, "I sing everything." And I said. <laughs> Sweet. So you guys are getting ready for Sweet Honey tonight then, right? And Miles looked at me and said, that's not fucking happening. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I'm not sure what the deal is there, but I have been in the band for this my uh, probably 13 years. And wow. that song has never come up once. No, no. And it's <laughs> like, if it had happens, Miles. It's like, nah, no, 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 no. It's not, I don't care. <laughs> We had Miles on the podcast, and I, I asked about it, and he basically said, next question in the nicest of ways. So oh. uh, it's, it's, it's not it, – you know, I'm fine with not hearing it, but I just think it's so funny that it has become such a thing in the community of people wanting to hear that. But you guys did do some some awesome songs. Um, I always love hearing Miles on Franklin's Tower. Now, when Miles was on the podcast, I asked him, so I'm going to ask you, what do you think – Roll away the do means. Jesus, you know it's so funny because when we were playing that song, I remember looking up the words and into those Grateful Dead meanings. I, I can't even remember what it is. Yeah, I don't know uh, either. It's just it's one of those things. Like it's one of their most popular songs. No, it and, doesn't. Uh, and I don't know I, what it I means. I do remember. I remember it means something. I just can't. I just can't put my finger on what it was. I remember, we all going through all the lyrics one time and thinking, right, wow, so the, lyri the lyrics kind of heavy. Yeah, anybody who's listening, go ahead and drop your comments below. Let me know what the fuck roll away the do means, <laughs> um, if you do know, because it's uh, I've always loved Franklin's Tower, and I loved your guys' take on it. So um, Kelly asked a little bit about the audience. I will tell you the audience was hot on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, and I now I've seen you guys in pretty much all – 
forms. I saw you guys in a smaller indoor facility in Portland, Oregon. Um, mm -hmm. I saw you guys in an outdoor, just a, a regular show um, in, right outside of Buffalo, New York and Lewiston at Art Park. Um, and now I've seen you guys at a at a huge festival in a gigantic setting. And the energy never seems to change from you guys. Um, it, it always seems like you guys are just going all out and, and leaving it all out there. But how much are you feeding off of this gigantic outdoor audience it's las vegas the lights are shining i mean do, do you get a little more up for this one oh uh, yeah to say the least i mean i grew up before slightly stupid and i grew up playing like a million shows to 20 30 people and even if 20 or 30 people have got the energy to to get it up for you and like clap for you and cheer for you you, you do play better there's just there's no way around it. You want to you want to play better for them, and, and mm. multiply that by a thousand of a reggae rise up. It's so funny because like before we even started, people are already clapping and cheering. <laughs> you know, it's you, know, <laughs> you already you know, feel welcome. Ride. <laughs> yeah, you're already like of one. You know, yeah. You, you get up there, and all you have to do is do okay, and they'll love you. Nice. <laughs> Makes your job a little easier. Well, you know, that many people all screaming at the same time does give you a lot of confidence and a lot of energy. And that's that's true for any band up there feeding off the energy of a crowd. It I'm it sure. just it's like do you have a favorite else. You got people cheering. Sorry, go ahead. You have, I was gonna say, do you have a favorite song to play? Um there's a there's a few of my favorites. I mean, I love uh there's a song we don't do a, a ton called Pond the Horizon that Kyle mm -hmm. sings that I just love that song something about it that, that the lyrics and the sound of it that i just dig when we're playing I, I i actually like most of the tunes we play so or there there are very few ones that oh, i don't oh do you <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i do uh but there's as far as favorites go that one top of the world i love playing that one because we don't do it a, a ton there are some songs that are staples that I, that you always play and some that only come along every once in a while for me, the ones right. that only come along every once in a while are always kind of special. Sure. Yeah, I every set. I mean, I don't know. I think I might have seen like you know uh, most of the most of the catalog at this point um, because you guys do keep it. You're switching it up so much, and right now with not playing a ton of shows, I mean stupid heads you guys have a, a pretty crazy following you know so mm -hmm. a lot of the people that were in las vegas you know we're at red rocks you know we're at petco park so right. Right. you gotta you gotta switch it up a little bit now let me ask you did you uh you live on the east coast right i do i live just outside of boston wicked smart so uh, <laughs> right. now uh so you came in from the East Coast. You weren't already there. Now, did you get a chance to get in and catch any of the shows earlier in the day? Uh, I did. I was there. I pretty much heard, if I didn't see them, I heard most people. Like, I, I think Kyle Smith was on first, and I could hear him from the bus. And he's he's a buddy of mine. I liked, I liked hearing him. I okay. uh, And, of course, right before we went on, I think the Common Kings were playing on the other stage, and they're always yeah. a class act. You know? Yeah, they went hard. Well, yeah, they are good. I haven't really seen them live that much. We've been supposed to tour with them for the last two years in a row, and it never happens. And I've only seen them a few times. But like at Red Rocks, they put on a great show. Really good singer, man. Those guys are those guys are talented. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the the whole day was stacked, and um, I remember watching the crowd as uh, Common Kings were, you know, really getting into it, and I was like, man, they are. Um, they're, you know, they're the headliner of this stage. They're the last yeah. band to go on on this stage and mm -hmm. they are, they're fucking going for it. Stupid's got yeah. their work cut out for them. And then you guys came out and blew the roof off the joint. It was outrageous. So, um, <laughs> well, uh, we don't really, when you're up there, I mean, you don't feel like it's competition. Like you have to keep up with whoever else was on before you. You've got your own show and hopefully everything goes great. And it's, it actually gives you a lot of uh, energy to watch other bands up there doing it before you play. It sort of gets you, gets the juices flowing, gets you in the mood to play. Uh, all right, now, all, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. I was going to say, just say I'm always rooting for, for whoever's up there playing. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, I, so we we're talking a little bit about song selection. I know you said it basically comes down to Kyle and and Miles ultimately. Um, yeah. But when you guys are playing a, a, a reggae rise up, you know that you're playing to a a big audience um, who's fans of a lot of different bands. So you kind of want to really give out the the show. Is there is there more pressure to play the hit? Because I noticed you got Officer in there early. Yeah. Um, you guys did 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you did a lot of the a lot of the really strong hits. Is that? Yeah. And when I saw you guys in Portland, you played a lot more of the stuff that you guys wanted to play. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot more, a lot more uh, of the punky, um, little, right. little, little tougher stuff. Does that mm-hmm. come into play? When you're when you're doing the song I, selection, I think it does because when you're playing to a crowd that large, you you definitely want to play some of the songs that you know they want to hear. You know, Officer being one, Closer to the Sun, or or whatever is whether it's Wise Man. You you do want to play some of the some of the ringers that you know people are going to love. Uh, yeah. At the smaller shows, of course, you can do whatever you want, and uh, it doesn't matter. You can mess up. You can do this. You can do that. But at the bigger shows, we tend definitely tend to have some of the ringers and then other special stuff, including special guests, rolled in to make it a whole show, you know. Now, after the show, did you head right back home or did you and the boys get to enjoy Las Vegas at all? Because <laughs> um, I, I, I'll tell you, I couldn't. Kelly was not interested. She was a no-go. <laughs> um, she, or, You know what? Ordinarily... I mean, in usual times, I would go out and party and hang out and see everybody and shake every hand and do whatever. Uh, This particular time, I was just, I didn't, I didn't go out. It was all, I felt like it was all too much for me. Like you, you land in Vegas and it's like, it's like the disco lights come on, the music starts and everybody goes, party till we die. (laughs) You know, and and I mean, everybody, full streets of people like Mm -hmm. jumping up and down and cheering. So. This time around, I just more kept to myself after the show. I'm a little, little wary these days. Um, that's just the way it's going for now. But you know, ordinarily, I do like to get out and see everybody afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Vegas. It's exactly right. The lights start going, and there's there's people everywhere. Oh man, G- girls are wearing feathers. There's feathers <laughs> on them. It's um, cra- it's a crazy <laughs> place, man. I mean, it's it's on you, especially when you first get off the plane. Like I got off the plane on friday night and just walked to our hotel and it was just like there were bands on the street people dancing cheering and drinking and i was just oh my god we're in vegas <laughs> <laughs> no hiding <laughs> yeah this is going down right like they're, oh, they're, it's, yeah it's, it didn't, it's it didn't go on. down it didn't go down for you did it kelly it did not. No, I, I was there to work. I did my work and I, and I relaxed and it was, it was perfect. It was just a lot. I mean, being back in that whole environment after, you know, COVID keeping everybody apart for so long. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was a lot, but it was a great weekend. Yeah. It's a big switch from like yeah. not going out and not playing to all of a sudden everybody's there and everybody's yeah. out and about and partying or doing whatever. I hear you. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was great to be back, but just, you know, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> Saturday morning, my Saturday morning started like this, Paul. I, I get up <laughs> and I'm excited. We're going to go out there. We've got the booth set up. We've got a great placement for the booth. And uh, mm-hmm. we're going to spread the word about Bradley's house. And I'm going to see all these amazing musicians. And I haven't been to a concert in so long. And um, Anna and I are standing there. We walk out. And I look over. And I, I shit you not, there is uh, Chucky. He's, um, <laughs> it's Chucky. So it is a chucky sized individual um wearing a chucky mask and i we make eye contact so i'm now making eye contact with with chucky it is uh it's 10 30 <laughs> it's 10 30 in the morning i know i've got a long day ahead of me and it's, yeah. it's 10 30 and i make eye contact with chucky and he gives me the finger Chucky gives me the finger, right? Nice. He knew it was going to be a good day. Yeah, so I'm like, dude, fuck me. No, fuck you, right? So I give him the (laughs) finger back, right? So then Chucky kind of like air jerks off on me. And then I'm like, and I'm like, what? This is how my, 
this is this is Vegas. Here it is. The <laughs> festival hasn't even started yet. And I I just got air jerked off on by Chucky at 1030 in the yeah. morning. So um, right. I knew I knew what the day was going to be like before you guys even got on the stage. Um, but I thought it was. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that you guys absolutely rocked it. And, uh, oh, and it's, thanks. and it's, it's Vegas, right? Like, what else can you say? I tell that story on the podcast. People are going to listen to this and they're like, wow, that's crazy. But the people from Vegas are going to be like, yeah, that yeah, that's a normal Sunday. <laughs> yeah. he, he did the same to me the week before. Yep. 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 <laughs> got it, Big got deal. it from that guy. Yeah. So, uh, because, because that is, that is just Vegas. Um, so yeah, it was they got, absolutely they got amazing. It all, man. Absolutely. They got, they got all the. All, <laughs> all the crazies are there. It's you know what it reminded me of a little bit is actually when we go down and play in New Orleans on Mardi Gras, and like mm. it's just one of those situations where everybody's raring to go, and like the party's got to go to a hundred. No, no one wants to miss out on what's happening. I got that same vibe in Vegas, a little a slightly different, you know, yeah. with gambling and all, but the partying thing is kind of similar to me. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was great, and you guys absolutely. Uh, absolutely rocked it. I, you said you didn't go out and, uh, you know, I know it's Vegas, so you probably made the right choice. So how, how do you come down from, from something like that? I mean, because the crowd was absolutely electric. You guys could have played until three in the morning and nobody would have budged. Uh, well, people were starting to get a little tipsy, tipsy over, but for the most part, people were, were there and, and enjoying it. Um, so when you come off stage, what do you, what's your normal routine after something like that? Well, you do, you, uh, you know, you don't come down for a while. It's true. You're sort of high on life after a show. And, uh, I tend to go to the bus and make a drink, talk about what happened a little bit, chill out, see some people, shake some hands. Um, but you don't really, even like till the next day, because you're always like thinking about, oh, what a, that was a great gig. This happened, that happened. You're sort of playing it over in your mind. And even when you go to bed, sometimes you'll dream. <laughs> so it does. You don't, you don't come back down from, from a big show like that, or at least I don't, for, for like a day. So you guys went in there, you, you rocked it. It was Vegas. You didn't go out. <laughs> Nothing crazy happened in Vegas. Or at least so you're telling us, Paul, because the rumor is, is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So I guess well, now <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect you to say anything else. Um, and, and, and that's okay. So, um, I know you guys aren't actively touring, but you do have, uh, Reggae Rise Up in Florida coming up, right? Another awesome event. Yeah, I can't wait. Next Saturday. Oh, right on. That'll be a fun reggae, one. Reggae Rise. It's, and it's a whole different sort of vibe, Florida vibe down there. And it's a little bigger, too. So it's even more crazy energy. But just doesn't have that Vegas party energy. But there's, there's something going on down there for sure. Absolutely. I've heard good things about that show. It's good. It's fun. And it's like a similar lineup. Um, the music's always great. But the, the crowds are... They're just as crazy down in Florida. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> like our Vegas, you know? I believe it. <laughs> it's just the a the afterlife's not quite the right. same. The, the actual show itself is, is a similar vibe. Maybe people just get a little more sleep. Maybe. Maybe they get a little more sleep, <laughs> a little more sun, a little more beach. There we go. Yeah, there's there's only one Vegas, and uh, seeing you guys up there on Saturday night, um, which was, you know, I know for myself and probably a lot of people, their first big show back. So uh, I can't thank you enough for rocking it. I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing a little bit about that experience. And, uh, Paul, we're 100% going to have you back on because uh, I want to get into all sorts of things. I'm a huge fan of Slightly Stupid and a huge fan of yours. And uh, um, I've uh, I've become a big fan of uh, of OGT, and I want to oh, talk wow. about all of that in long form, wow. like we uh, like we usually do. So, um, but right now, I uh, I just want to thank you for coming on and talking to us a little reggae rise up and a and a little Las Vegas. The real reason why we're doing this, Paul, is uh, we're kind of rubbing it in for all the people that didn't go. That's uh, right. That yeah. This. <laughs> And for, and for all the people like me who are walking around broken hearted, missing it, we're all getting a chance to relive it one more time. So uh, thank you for helping us out with that. Thanks for having me on. It was a, it was so a great much, event. And I'm glad you guys were there to enjoy it. Glad you had a fun time. You know, let's do it again. Yeah. Let's do it all again next year, as they say. Absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks all again, right. Paul. 
All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys, you heard Kelly and I speak a little bit with Paul from Slightly Stupid. He told us a little bit about headlining Saturday night and what it was like to be back in Las Vegas. And I want to speak with one more performer that was out there, a guy that I got to spend a little time with, um, Johnny Groove from the band The Irie. Johnny, how you doing, man? Good, man. Thank you for uh, having me, man. Love the show and everything it is about. All right, so I got to ask, uh, Groove, that's like a social media last name, right? That's not like your shoot last name, is it? No, it's not, man. My la- Groove is like uh, from my last band, uh, the Vera Groove, and my uh, bass player, Corey Groove, who actually is uh, good friends with Kelly also. Um, he's like, I play bass, you know, I'm Corey Groove, you're the drummer, so Johnny Groove, drum yes. and bass in. So I love it. Kinda, I love it. kind of kept it. So you guys, uh, you guys had an opportunity. I, I know you guys have been playing some shows, um, you know, around Arizona and around the area, but um, Reggae Rise Up has to be your your biggest show year to date at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was awesome, man. So, what was it like to be out there? Now, I gotta say. Uh, we we just spoke, Kelly and I just spoke with Paul. We talked to him a little bit. Saturday night, stupid beat that audience up. I mean, that audience left there Saturday. They were hurting. Uh, <laughs> you guys you guys came in on Sunday, and you were the ones that, that kind of got to get the crowd back up and going. Um, and I just kind of watched as everybody flocked over to you guys, and it slowly started to fill in during your set. Um, what was it like to be back in a festival atmosphere and, and, and to see all of the people together? And I mean, it was a pretty impressive setup out there in Las Vegas. Dude, it was, it was so impressive with the, you know, the reggae rise up crew, um, their hospitality to everyone being at the festival. Like the energy was just, it was amazing on like all ends. And, uh, for festival wise, that was actually our, because the Irie, we've only been a band for almost two years. So that was actually like our first festival ever playing. So it was awesome experience to like open up the main stage and, you know, play with everyone and meet everyone, hang out with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was an awesome day. The weather was incredible. You guys got to get out there. It was a stacked lineup. Um, I mean, there was just so many amazing acts both days. How does the Irie get picked? Do you remember how you guys got in there? Do you remember getting the phone call? What What was that like? Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Actually, it was we got put on like last minute. So, but when we did find out, we were all like, "For real? Like, all right." We were stoked. <laughs> like, yes. Oh, Vegas. All right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's only like a four five hour drive away, so it's not bad. If, if we have to so did, did the three of you guys all drive up together you guys carpool up yeah man we we, we just went up since everything was uh backline we went up in my little uh my little kia soul man <laughs> don't don't Which start kind because of, I'll, bl- I'll blow your spot up man because you were just telling us before we hit record you're like yeah we were at the cosmo the night before we were up on the top floor we had the butler service and uh <laughs> so don't the, the irie did it big and in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, the first ha- night, yeah. Have you, guys, uh, have you guys ever played Las Vegas before? No, that was all of our uh, first time ever playing it, man. When, uh, we loved it. Like, the fe- like I said, again, like, the festival was, like, so well put together. Uh, the staff, everything, like, it was, and then it was, and we sprang into you and Kelly. That was amazing, too. Um, and then, uh, yeah, dude, I can't really say, like, the energy was just amazing there. Yeah, it really was. It's like those festivals are, you know, I've said it before. If you've never had an opportunity to get out to one of those festival guys, you have to get out and see. It's just like one big family. Um, and yeah, it, it really was funny is. because you guys were up on stage and Kelly said, you know, I, I'd really like to get back there and, and talk to talk to some of the acts, especially the Irie who's up right now. Um, you know, I love their, their drummer, Johnny, those guys, they're just good guys. And, um, but she was just so busy at the booth talking about the Noel family foundation and shaking hands and selling shirts. And I said, you know what? I'm going to fucking. So I went back there and I ran into you guys and, uh, you guys got to come out and and see the tent and, and meet Kelly a little bit and, uh, kind of come out and mingle with the fans. Uh, and then, you know, I, 
was uh, I was lucky enough to be able to hang out in your little your little green room area for a little bit and, and chat with some of the guys, and uh, everybody was really really enjoying themselves. I had a lot of fun with uh, with Marcus and and Joe from Fayuka. The two of us sat back there and, and yucked it up for a little bit, and uh, it was just an amazing an amazing atmosphere with both the acts backstage and all of the fans up front. Um, it, it was just a it was an amazing experience for myself. So I can't even imagine being able to get up there and you know, dude, you opened for the fucking dirty heads, man. Like that's that's pretty big. Yeah, man, that was that was awesome. Like all, all the bands like um on that stage and um the other stage too, Pacific Dub, all those guys, Fortunate Youth, just to be on that same day festival. It was stacked, like you said, and it was uh the biggest stage we've ever played. So we're all like, oh, like it was like while we're up there, like the sound is so in like full, like like with the big festival stage, the main stage. So it felt we've never like got to feel that before, and it was it was an awesome like experience, and we're wanting more now. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can I can only imagine. Now, did you guys get to do anything fun, Las Vegas? I know that uh, I ran into you out on Fremont. You were thinking about doing the zip line. The the slot zilla zip line I know. down across Fremont. Did you ever make it onto that? Did you guys do did you did you do anything Vegasy? Um, no, yes and no. I mean, we kind of were just like walking around. Um Yeah, you just gotta uh, go out we got there in and like late. It. We got in late uh the night before and just kinda like chilled at the the Cosmo where we were staying at just to get rest before the show and then uh, woke up, put, opened the main stage, and then watched the show. And then we kind of, like, as we were in, you were kind of, like, wandering around Fremont. Um, I I played a little roulette and some craps. And I guess that's kind of vegas right, I would say? Yeah, that's vegas enough, man. Okay. So I think that's, like, the most vegas thing we did. No one wanted to go on the zip line with me or do any rides. So I was like, oh, fine. Yeah. Bunch of babies. Uh, I'll tell you, the last time we were in Vegas, right there on Fremont, um, Anna and I walked out of the hotel, and we were just kind of walking around a little bit, and they were, like, shutting Fremont down. We're like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, it's And they were filming um, a, a scene for the new CSI which is what? CSI Las Vegas. Yeah. So we like got to sit there and like watch it all get done and redone and re it was, uh, so it was kind of cool. It sucked because like, you know, it really held up traffic, but we also got to see like a TV show get made. So, you know, that was, that was kind of Vegas y, but we were, uh, we were also pretty spent. We spent long days at the, uh, at the booth and, um, selling t shirts and talking about the Noel Family Foundation and just meeting people. So, um, it was kind of neat though on Sunday to, to be out on Fremont and just kind of walking and uh you know you, I'm like oh yeah you know, see all these people from the festival and all the different acts and everybody's out there just having a good time trying to enjoy the the last night of Vegas and then boom there's there's the fucking Irie walking right down the middle of Fremont huge smiles on your faces <laughs> uh you guys were you guys were having a, a good time and I thought there's a couple guys that just rocked the stage and now they're out just checking out Fremont and uh and the first thing he said to me is nobody's gonna get on the zip line and I said you know what johnny neither am i so don't <laughs> don't feel bad about that because i'm not fucking getting strapped into that thing either you're crazy i can't believe you <laughs> wanted to go on that but um That's so funny. what what's uh what's next for the iron do you guys have any uh any shows booked coming up um yeah we do uh when we were really working on our um we just wrapped up our album um so now we're just working through all that, those stages, which will be out uh, next year, which so it's going to be actually our first album because we only, we only have uh, like about a, two singles out and a, two EPs. But so we're stuck on our first album coming out, um, and uh, we do have an end of the year show here in Arizona, but it's not announced. I don't know if I can say it or not. Oh. I have no idea, but. All right, so hey guys, keep an eye out on the Irie, and we're gonna have you, George, and Marcus back. Like Kelly's a big fan. Uh, I really enjoyed your set. It really helped get my day going on on Sunday, actually. And uh, so I think that you guys are gonna be making a lot of noise in this scene for uh, for a long time coming. And we're gonna get all three of you guys on, and we're gonna kind of hear the story about how you guys cross paths and uh, just watching you guys interact and watching you guys together. Um, there's definitely a 
chemistry there with uh, with you guys for sure. So uh, I look yeah. forward to getting all of you guys back on and and kind of chatting about that. So how long did it take? Because I, I I was just saying that it, it's it's been about a week and I still I miss Vegas still. Did you guys have that little? It's that's one of those places where whenever I leave it, I'm like, fuck, I want to go back to Vegas. Um, <laughs> did you did you have any of that, or did you pretty yeah, much? Yeah, so me and George, uh, singer, we actually stayed an extra day. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So uh, I think we got a little bit of like we were like wanting to like you know experience Vegas more, and then we just like passed out early. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually just, what uh, ends up happening. Big plans, yeah. and then they just don't. Well, that yeah, wind. We were, there was that we crazy just, wind on Monday um, yeah, it was when gnarly. we were there. It was gnarly. We were, like, we were fine, and then all of a sudden, like, we were like, oh, man, it's like Antarctica. Or so, like, it was all nice, and like, you know, like, like 80, 90, and then I think it turned into like 50. I don't know. Yeah, it got, it got cold and windy fast, and... Uh, we drove from Vegas back up to, or over to Southern California, and on the ride there, the wind was just brutal, and we stopped somewhere to get something to eat and, and use the restroom, and it was like 50 degrees and 50 mile an hour winds, and I was just like, what the fuck? This is, the West Coast isn't supposed to be like this. Yeah, See, I'm, know, from, right? I'm from Buffalo, New York, so I'm in Buffalo right now. It's already, I got the oh, heat wow. on in my yeah. house already um so yeah it was uh it was not what it was supposed to be but um at least you guys that was the, you that was the next day though it was like it was planned out you know the higher power whatever Lady yeah gods like you know they planned out for a beautiful weekend festival and it happened oh my god dude if it didn't our tent would have been in fucking reno um, <laughs> that thing would have had complete lift off and i don't know what would have happened so yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. Hey, I'm happy you guys stayed an extra day and you had you know grand illusions of. Uh, let me ask you a question. While you were out on Fremont, did you see the did you see the guy playing Chucky? Did you get flipped off by Chucky at all? No. All right. Yeah, I did told you? that story. Yeah, I told that story with Paul. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a Chucky sized um, man, and he he gave me the middle finger. We kind of had a little yeah, situation. I would have. I would have. I would have laughed. My yeah, I, you know that was how my that was how my Saturday started. Chucky gave me the finger. And I'm like, <laughs> That's when you know it's gonna be a good day, right? I'm like, dude, fuck me, fuck you, man. It's 10 a.m. on <laughs> Fremont Street. Don't come at me like that, Chucky. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, it was cool, but yeah, it was great to uh, it was great to see you guys out there. It was great to be able to meet you guys, and uh, I look forward to having all of you guys on the podcast. I know Kelly does as well. And uh, I think that'll be a great episode. And like I said, it was uh, it was just kind of cool to have you guys uh, to see you guys out there on Sunday, and then have you come back and be able to talk about it and and relive it a little bit. And that was your first big festival, so you know, and that yeah. was a and that was a big fucking festival, man. That wasn't a little. I mean, that was I was impressed by the size of uh, uh, of the grounds and and the bands and the stage. I mean, it was it was an impressive. Uh, an impressive set. Did you, um, so you guys didn't get to see anything on Saturday cause you came in. So you missed all of Saturday's action, huh? Yeah, we did. We did. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's all right. It was, uh, it was an amazing day, but, um, yeah, slightly stupid. They, they Dude. did the crowd. They, they got the crowd going. And uh, like I said, I, as, as you guys were getting started on Sunday, I'm like, fuck, man. There's like, people are coming in slow here. I feel bad for these guys because they're yeah, doing it. It was a little slow bad. start, you know? Um, and, but, you know, I, I guess it's Saturday night in Vegas. Like, yeah. yeah. So it, it, you think about it, man. You guys had like one of the, you guys had one of the most important spots in the entire festival, right? Like, you were the Sunday pick me up. Like, everybody had a rough night on Saturday. Just everybody was coming in, travel, stupid, absolutely rocked the place, just took everything out of them. And then it was up to you guys to come and bring them back up. And you guys did just that. So, uh, my hat is off to you guys. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Johnny, where can, uh, where can anybody that's listening to this? There's actually a, a, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's actually a couple of real good YouTube videos up from your set. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had an opportunity to check any of those out yet. Um, oh, no. 
Yeah, so anybody that's listening, if you weren't lucky enough to be there, that's why we're recapping it and talking a little bit about it with you. Uh, but you guys can go ahead and search on YouTube uh, and look up the Irie um, Las Vegas, and you will find quite a few really good videos of, uh, of you guys up there doing what you do. In the meantime, where can everybody, you guys have uh, social media, anything that you want to plug for people to check out? Yeah, man, just that we've got our one main one. It's just the IrieBand.com. And that you can right. find everything on there. Awesome. Well, uh, guys, I certainly recommend checking them out. Check out those videos as well. Um, Johnny, George, and Marcus, they're just, uh, they're awesome guys. And they, uh, they, get You're awesome, do, man. <laughs> they get up there and do their fucking thing, man. So, uh, it's one of those bands that, you know, you guys, it's, I told Kelly, actually, it's tough listening to you guys and not just kind of smiling and getting into a better mood. Like, uh, while your, while your set was going on, I, so I told Kelly, I said, I dare somebody to be in a grumpy, too tired, too hungover, whatever it may be. Uh, it's impossible to be feeling that while these guys are up here doing this. So, um, <laughs> certainly, uh, certainly look forward to seeing more of you guys and getting all of you guys on the show and being able to talk about how the Irie got going and what's coming up next for you guys in long form. So Johnny, thank you so much for coming on and talking a little reggae rise up with us. And, uh, and hey, man, thank you again. Experience. Dude, much love to you and Kelly and the family. Yeah, man, absolutely. We're going to get you guys back soon. All right, man. All right, Johnny. Well, Kelly, it's fun to hear uh, from some other people who were there in Las Vegas. And uh, I guess it must make me feel a little silly that Paul also didn't go out and play. And you didn't want to go out and play. And <laughs> you know, uh-huh. uh else? But I did, uh, I did get out a little bit. And uh, it was crazy to see. Um, Fremont Street on Saturday night and Sunday night and you see people walking around wearing the Bradley's House t-shirt or the Bradley's House hoodie or tank top um, that they just bought that day. Um, it, it was ridiculous how many friends I feel like we made over a two-day span being out there. I agree. This is the first time I've really seen a lot of people around an event. Um, even coming up to the booth for the first time already wearing a Bradley's house shirt or hat or hoodie. And it just, it was awesome for me. It was so great to, to meet so many people that I had talked with and, um, you know, face to face and, and there was so much support. It really, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was tiring and exhausting, but so totally worth it getting to connect with people. And we met so many great supporters and just had a lot of really great conversations. So it was, it was a fun weekend. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, pretty much right behind us in the little vendor spot, we had our friends over at Law Records. Um, yes. And uh, we met Waverly. She was there running the booth. But it was just so neat to see the people kind of bouncing back and forth between the two booths because either she told them about us after they saw the house that Bradley built compilation or people were at our booth and we were telling them, hey, you could pick up the compilation album right behind us here. Uh, that was uh, That was pretty neat to have that set up that way. Absolutely. And to have so many artists from the album playing the show. That was really fun too. And so even though I spent most of the time at the booth and didn't really get to wander out, I definitely got to hear everybody's sets and everyone sounded fantastic. And the crowd was having so much fun. Everybody, you know, was, was super into it. And it was, it was just really neat. It was kind of like a, a reunion of sorts getting, you know, just knowing all those people were there and, and having law there and sending people back and forth. Lots of fun. Now you did, you were at the booth all day, both days, um, shaking hands and selling shirts and setting up merch and doing all the things. But, but in all fairness, uh, we did kind of get our own little personal show uh, in between sets because Gabo showed up and he brought his guitar and Joe was there and he had his flute piano and they <laughs> flute uh, piano. It was a flute. I don't guys. think that's really what it's called. Listen to me. I'm going to share this video in the Bradley's house group on Facebook. I will share the video and you tell me if Joe's not playing the flute piano. <laughs> it was a, it was a piano. It had a mouthpiece set up. I'm pretty to sure it. Joe will back me up on that. <laughs> Um, but no, they sounded great. We were so fortunate to have Gabo and Joe from Fayuga there. And uh, yeah, in between sets, 
when things were a little bit quiet, they would make sure that it was not quiet at our booth and um, lots of fun. Uh, they always do such an amazing job, and, you know, getting people excited as they're walking by and into it. So that was really cool. Yeah, we got our own private show there. Yeah. And uh, our listeners might notice that my voice is still a little raspy um, and sure, you a little a bit lot of, of that talking. Is- Yeah, a little bit of that is Vegas, but most of that is uh, being able to talk to so many people. And um, again, it was crazy to have people that uh, say, oh, yeah, we're podcast listeners or, uh, you know, yeah, we've donated to the fact we bought the album. I've already got the socks. It's just it's so great to be able to get out there and and talk to people. And I know that uh, for the foundation, this was something that you guys were, were doing quite a bit before the podcast got rolling here. And then COVID really kind of shut that down. So for the last almost two years, the Noel Family Foundation hasn't really been able to get out there and get into the community. So this was really the first event uh, for the foundation in, I don't know, like 16 months, right? Easily. Yeah. Since February of 2020. So it was definitely great to be out there. And, um, and I was so grateful for my Savage CBD balm. I'm telling you, standing on my feet two days straight, things were a little sore. I'm not getting any younger. So I was really glad that we brought that stuff along. We're so grateful for Savage sending us some stuff to try. It was perfect timing. Yeah, that uh, that worked out well. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that we had that as well. So, um, you know, Quick cheap plug, yes, of course it is. But we we were really <laughs> using true. it. And it. Yeah, and it's true. So uh savagecbd.com, use code Brad30 and save 30% off your first purchase. So uh yeah, Las Vegas was a, a lot of fun. It was great to be able to get out there. There's a lot of great vendors, uh, a lot of great food. Um guys, anytime that there is an opportunity for you to get out to one of these festivals that has got a bunch of bands that you like. I recommend you go do it. It is a, uh, it is a lot of fun. And the atmosphere was, uh, it, it really is different than any other kind of festival or big concert type event I've been to within this community. Everybody really considers each other family in there. Um, I don't know if I've ever been to a two day festival where I haven't seen fights and some sort of craziness. And I didn't see anything like that at all. So, um, the crowd was certainly in the crowd. Right- yeah, it was uh, it was awesome, and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get out to some some more events coming up here. So yes, looking um, forward to it. I'm yeah. hoping we can get into uh, Cali vibes in February. So that'll be great. Looks like a good show. They just made the announcement on that. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll be our next big show. I'm like so hype about Cali vibes. Yeah, right? that and lineup f- is amazing. The lineup is amazing. And for me, I know this is going to sound crazy, but obviously I love reggae music. But an opportunity to see the Wu-Tang Clan is like, I don't know if you know this or not, Kelly, but the Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. (laughs) Right? So it's been said, Jared. Right. It's been said. (laughs) Yeah. So um, as much as I love all of the bands, the lineup is just stacked. I mean, the it Marley really Boys, and you, yeah. you guys have seen the the poster shared a million times. But uh, for me, I see that Wu Tang, and it's uh, it's just sticking out like a sore thumb. Especially since I just got done watching the Wu Tang Saga on Hulu. Um, there you go. Which Another was, shameless uh, plug. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm excited. To, <laughs> except for they're not paying us. So, no, they're not. Um, so Hulu, yeah. if you'd like to sponsor the podcast, let us know. Yeah, it's Bradley's House Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Um, now, for everybody who wasn't able to make it to Reggae Rise Up, uh, you guys can visit the Noel Family Foundation.org. Um, check out the merch and stuff that's available. Um, of course, we have those pictures, um, Kelly, some just amazing prints uh, from Sublime Photographer Josh Kaufman. Uh, I shouldn't say Sublime Photographer, but Josh was well known to be around uh, Brad and the Boy. And he's got some iconic photos of them. Uh, and we have some of those and they are numbered and signed by Josh, signed by Jacob and signed by your dad. Uh, and those are just uh, amazing pieces to, to uh, they really draw, they were drawing people right over. Uh, yeah. to the booth. So you can check those them out. Then. Only a few left though. So hopefully by the time this, <laughs> this podcast yeah. airs, there'll be some uh 
<laughs> yeah, well, guess what? And everybody hopes that they sell out. So get on there and, and help yeah. us sell them out. Um, okay. And uh, some some pins, guys. If you're a pin collector or if you're thinking about becoming a pin collector or if you're not a pin collector, you should look into pin collecting. Um, and there are some awesome pins that are available uh, all at the nolfamilyfoundation.org. And, of course, Anna will be nice enough to put the link tree. It'll be right there in the description of the show. Um, so just scroll down a little bit and click on the link tree and that will get you to everything Noel Family Foundation related. Um, to everybody that was out in Las Vegas uh, that stopped by and said hello, thank you so much. It was uh, it was really a lot of fun meeting everybody and yes. um, people were just like, yeah, we would we would like to help. So uh, they did because we yes. we left we left light on on shirts and hoodies and, Sold and everything almost everything. Else. It was amazing. Yeah, I tried to sell part of the tent. You didn't let me, but I know. Um, <laughs> that's for another that's for another time. So um yeah guys it was uh it was really cool. We hope that uh we hope that everyone that was there enjoyed it. We hope that all the people that weren't there got to hear a little bit about what this event is like and uh you'll consider joining some of them in the future like hopefully Cali vibes where we're gonna be Kelly maybe hopefully fingers crossed fingers crossed um we might know somebody right <laughs> Gotta think. Inquiries gotta, have been made. <laughs> gotta think. Gotta think. At this point, we might know a person or two. I feel like um, we should. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Cali Vibes is is in the future. So, um, as everybody is hearing this, um, it will be uh, Wednesday. So it it'll be a little bit longer from Las Vegas. So hopefully, my Las Vegas, and I don't want to say hangover because that's not the the right no. term, but it 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 is like a this missing, like, I just miss Las Vegas. I, it was warm and it was sunny and there's bright lights and Buffalo doesn't have any of that shit. None of it. So <laughs> not um, even electricity, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we, yeah, we don't Turn even have the internet lights, here. Jared. There's nothing even going on here. It's, I don't even know where I am. I somehow, I, somehow I left Las Vegas and I ended up in 1933. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, clearly the city of Buffalo is not going to be a sponsor. So. The tourism board can't be any very happy with us right now. I could be forced to change my opinion if given the <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, no, it was uh, it was great. But I do miss Las Vegas and I am looking forward to Cali Vibes. Hopefully we get a chance to get in there. So, um, guys, you can check out the Bradley's House group uh, on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to post some uh, some videos that I took, got some amazing videos of uh, Slightly Stupid uh, and, of course, uh, Gabo and Joe. Um, so if you guys want to check out some of the cool stuff that was going in Las Vegas, I will go ahead and share some of those uh, mementos with you guys. Um, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for joining us once again. Make sure to go ahead and click that five stars. It means a lot. Even if we didn't earn it today, we will probably earn it in the future, maybe. Um, but just click it anyway. Uh, and go ahead and leave your comments, guys. We hear everything. If you have an upcoming event uh, or product that you would like to have uh, featured on Bradley's House Podcast, uh, you can go ahead and reach us at Bradley's House Podcast at gmail.com. I am Jared Orr, she is Kelly Noel, and we are out of time. Doesn't mean that you guys have to go home, but you got to leave Bradley's house.
sound when I kiss Mixie. She makes me feel horny. Cause I'm the type of lover with that sensitivity. When she kiss my neck and she tickle me fancy, she give me right kind of loving on Sunday morning. En el otro lado es donde viví. Con mi guita que se llama Mixi. Su hermana si me quiere. Y ahorita tenemos un bebé. Sus padres, sus tíos me trataron matar. But they did not get too far. Un poco después tuve que regresar con un chingo de dinero. Cause you know I'm a star. Yo fui a Costa Rica para tomar y surfear. Platicaba con la raza cause they know who we are. Si no te di yo cuenta de I guess you never will. You must be a muñeca if you still stand in some rebound. Caress me down mm. And I start loving the sound And I went mm. And a girl caress me down mm. And I start loving the sound Tienes que bailar because mm. Girl, caress me down mm. And I start loving 